Welcome to our presentation on endocrinology, focusing on key insights from the American Board of Internal Medicine. Central hypothyroidism evaluation requires neuroimaging and pituitary hormone testing. It's crucial to diagnose and treat glucocorticoid deficiency before starting levothyroxine therapy to avoid adrenal crisis by doing cosintropin testing. For dose titration of levothyroxine in central hypothyroidism, we measure free T4 levels. Hypothyroidism is often linked to dyslipidemia, and patients should be screened with serum TSH levels before lifestyle changes or starting statin. Levothyroxine therapy can improve dyslipidemia caused by hypothyroidism. Another fact is significant hypothyroidism may lead to chronic pericardial effusion. When diagnosing medullary thyroid cancer, it's important to evaluate for metastatic disease if even a single lymph node identified or calcitonin is more than 400. Also checking for RET mutation and coexisting tumors is needed. Euthyroid 6 syndrome has low T3 level, low TSH, and low or normal T4 level. Typically, no treatment is needed unless true hypothyroidism is present. It's associated with critical illness, and thyroid function tests should be rechecked after recovery. Levothyroxine dosing can be influenced by various factors, including absorption and metabolism. Bile acid binding agents and iron or calcium can decrease absorption. Thyroglobulin binding globulin increased by estrogen, whereas decreased by steroids and androgens. Thyroid hormone metabolism increased by rifampin, phenytoin, and carbamazepine. Subclinical hypothyroidism involves increased TSH with normal T4 levels. Treatment with levothyroxine is considered if TSH is above 10 UIUML or if positive antithyroid peroxidase antibodies are present, especially in symptomatic patients or those with specific conditions like pregnancy, ovulatory dysfunction, or hypercholesterolemia. Thyroid nodules require careful evaluation through clinical assessment and imaging. Depending on TSH levels and ultrasound findings, further testing like fine needle aspiration or iodine scintigraphy in low TSH patient may be necessary to determine the appropriate treatment path. Amiodarone can affect thyroid function, leading to decreased T4-T3 conversion in which no treatment is needed. It can cause inhibition of thyroid hormone synthesis with TSH being high and are treated with levothyroxine supplementation. Amiodarone-induced thyroiditis, type 1 or I, which means increased thyroid hormones, so antithyroid meds are used for treatment, and in amiodarone-induced thyroiditis type 2, all TSH, T3 and T4 are decreased or undetectable, which is treated with glucocorticoids. Myxedema coma is a life-threatening condition resulting from severe, untreated hypothyroidism. It can be triggered by stressors like infection or cold exposure. Symptoms include altered mental status, bradycardia, hypoventilation, hyperglycemia, hypothermia, and hyponatremia, requiring urgent treatment with levothyroxine and glucocorticoids. Thyroid storm is a critical condition requiring immediate treatment with beta blockers and antithyroid medications. In cases like de Quervain thyroiditis, beta blocker and steroids are prioritized. Radioactive iodine is used for solitary hot nodules. Factitious thyroiditis is characterized by normal thyroglobulin levels, unlike increased levels in normal thyroiditis. Post-thyroid cancer surgery, suppressive levothyroxine doses can lead to osteoporosis. Thyroid hormone decreased conversion of 25 vitamin D to 1, 25 vitamin D. Hungry bone syndrome after parathyroidectomy is due to a sudden drop in PTH, leading to rapid bone calcium, phosphate, and magnesium uptake. Treatment involves aggressive calcium and vitamin D supplementation. In hypercalcemia, secondary to sarcoidosis, prednisone is used after IV fluids. Vitamin D intoxication leads to high 25 vitamin D levels, while sarcoidosis causes elevated 1,025 vitamin D due to granulomatous production. Evaluating an adrenal incidentaloma involves testing for excess adrenal hormones. If no hormone secretion, then further imaging or surgical intervention may be necessary to rule out cancer or manage hormone excess. If patient has hypokalemia with high blood pressure, we do plasma aldosterone, renin ratio. If high, we do confirmatory aldosterone suppression test. If not suppressed, then hormone released from adrenals. We do imaging followed by adrenal venous sampling, which help determine the need for surgery or medical therapy. In primary hyperaldosteronism, 
Aldosterone suppression testing can be skipped if spontaneous hypokalemia, undetectable plasma renin, or super high aldosterone activity are present. Cushing syndrome diagnosis requires at least two positive screening tests from these three tests, including low-dose dexamethasone suppression test, 24-hour urinary-free cortisol assay, and late-night salivary cortisol assay. Differentiating between ACTH-independent and ACTH-dependent forms is crucial for determining the appropriate treatment strategy. Pheochromocytoma is suspected with symptoms like headaches and hypertension. Diagnosis involves measuring plasma and urine metanephrines, followed by imaging. Preoperative alpha blockade is essential for managing this condition. In insulinoma and factitious oral hypoglycemia, insulin and C-peptide are normal to high. Differentiating between these two involves oral hypoglycemic screen. In factitious insulin injection, C-peptide is low. Managing diabetic ketoacidosis involves 0.9% normal saline. 5% dextrose is added if glucose less than 200. We think about transitioning from insulin drip to basal bolus if able to eat with glucose. 200, anion gap of less than 13, and bicarbonate of greater than 15. We overlap subcutaneous and IV insulin by 1 to 2 hours. We need to hold insulin drip if potassium is less than 3.3. We continue potassium supplements till potassium is less than 5.3. Hypertriglyceridemia treatment between 150-500, lifestyle modifications such as weight loss, moderating alcohol intake, and increased exercise along with statins are recommended. For levels above 500 mg DL, the initial goal is pancreatitis prevention, using fibrates, fish oil, and abstinence from alcohol. Once levels are below 500 mg DL, statin therapy may be considered for those with known cardiovascular disease or high risk. In managing triglyceride-induced pancreatitis, the initial treatment involves intravenous fluid hydration and pain control. When triglyceride is less than 500, insulin infusion may be considered. For levels exceeding 1,000 mg DL, or in cases of severe pancreatitis, therapeutic plasma exchange, known as a pheresis, might be necessary. Pituitary incidentalomas, particularly those measuring less than 10 mm, typically do not cause visual defects or pituitary hypofunction and require monitoring with prolactin levels unless there's evidence of other pituitary hormonal hypersecretion. Larger lesions, over 10 nulomibiramir, should be evaluated with biochemical testing for both pituitary hormonal hyperfunction and hypofunction, as well as formal visual field testing. Surgery is considered for macroadenomas with hormonal dysfunction or tumor mass effect, except for prolactinomas where medical therapy is effective. Acromegaly is associated with an increased risk of several cancers, including esophageal, gastric, colon, and melanoma. Due to these risks, a screening colonoscopy is recommended at the time of diagnosis and every three to four years after age 50. Pituitary apoplexy is characterized by acute hemorrhage or infarction into an adenoma, sometimes with pre-existing adenoma. Presentation includes thunderclap headache, visual field defects, and panhypopituitarism. Diagnosis involves MRI of the brain, which is more sensitive than CT scans. The first step in treatment is glucocorticoid replacement, even before MRI, followed by surgical decompression for persistent vision changes. Prolactinomas can develop into osteoporosis, which serves as an indication for treatment. Addressing this condition is crucial to prevent further bone density loss. Diagnosing acromegaly involves evaluating IGF-1 levels and conducting oral glucose suppression tests. If growth hormone suppression is inadequate, an MRI of the brain is performed to check for pituitary masses. Depending on the findings, surgical versus medical management is considered, or evaluation for extra pituitary causes of acromegaly. Evaluating male hypogonadism begins with assessing specific symptoms and signs, followed by checking testosterone levels. If low serum testosterone is confirmed, further tests like LH and FSH are conducted to determine primary or secondary hypogonadism. In cases of obesity, serum hormone binding globulin is low, necessitating free testosterone confirmation with repeat tests. In cases of hypogonadism with low testosterone and concerns for prolactinoma, checking prolactin levels is essential. Treatment involves bromocryptine or cabergoline rather than testosterone supplementation.
Additionally, chronic opioid use can lead to decreased gonadotropin-releasing hormone secretion, impacting testosterone levels. HbA1c levels can be misleading due to conditions affecting red blood cell turnover. Increased A1c might happen in deficiencies like iron or vitamin B12, while reduced A1c could high turnover like hemolytic anemia, erythropoietin use, or recent blood transfusion. In such cases, correcting the underlying condition is crucial, and serum fructosamine tests can provide a more accurate glycemic control estimate over two, three weeks. Candidates for bariatric surgery include patients with a BMI of 40 key gaurame tars or higher without comorbid illness, or a BMI of 35 to 40 key glaurame tars with at least one comorbid illness like type 2 diabetes or hypertension or hyperlipidemia. For patients with uncontrolled HbA1c who meet criteria for bariatric surgery, opting for surgery is preferable to adding diabetes medications. Differential diagnosis of myopathy includes conditions like glucocorticoid-induced myopathy and dermato or polymyositis, which is mainly weakness with muscle atrophy. Polymyalgia rheumatica presents with pain and stiffness. Statin is also pain with CK elevation. Hypothyroid myopathy has both pain and weakness. Prolactinomas, Cushing's syndrome, and thyrotoxicosis are all secondary causes of osteoporosis. In young patients with osteoporosis, it's important to rule out endocrine causes by considering other clinical symptoms and conducting necessary lab tests. Copper deficiency can present with similar neurohematological symptoms as B12 deficiency, although folic acid does not cause similar symptoms. Copper deficiency is particularly noted in patients who have undergone ruan y gastric bypass surgery. Thank you for your attention throughout this presentation. We hope the information provided has been insightful and beneficial for your understanding of these medical conditions and their management.